My name is Grace Kuno. I'm Jeff Hearn. I'm Peace Kigua. I'm Rebecca. My, my name is Ndomiso Ngobe. I'm Neo Ndovo. Um, I'm Vimar. My name is Jordana Matlon. Um, my name is Mpumlelo Pagati. I'm a researcher at UNICE's Institute for Social and Health Sciences. Uh, and I'm also a PhD student, and my PhD is about women's post-rape experiences, so how they kind of understand and integrate that trauma into, into their lives. I'm currently doing my Master's in Development Studies at Virgin University, and my focus, I'm looking at um, the relationship between traditional leaders and elected ward councillors at local government, and how does that relationship um, impact um, service delivery? Student at UNISA, doing an MA in Theory of Literature. I'm a senior lecturer in psychology at Wits University. I'm the final year student at UNISA in the Department of Psychology, and I'm doing a research on LGBTQ, LGBT and their, their experiences in primary healthcare facilities in South Africa. I am an assistant professor at the School of International Service at American University. Uh, I, I study African masculinities um, and the lives and livelihoods of men in the informal economy, specifically in urban contexts. I'm a professor of sociology at the University of Johannesburg. I guess the most immediate word that comes to mind is power in some sense or other. I don't mean that all men are powerful, that's not the case. Some men are in disgustingly powerful and some men have degrees of power and some men have very little or even no power or obliterated in some cases by other men or by themselves sometimes. But it's somehow looking at the issue around gender and gender relations but gender you can't separate from everything else. Gender intersects with class and racialization and other social divisions. But when you talk about gender, people often immediately jump to talking about women and girls. And that's obviously really, really important because women and girls' voices have often even characteristically been suppressed or marginalized or made silent. So there's a good reason why people jump to talk about women and girls because that raises up women's voices in many, many ways. But there's another reason why people sometimes jump to talking about women and girls only when they're discussing gender, which is that the privileged or relatively privileged or whatever don't usually like talking about their privilege. Um, so for many men, it actually is a bit problematic or a bit unnerving or even embarrassing or even shameful to start talking about how men are also part of the gender system or gender relations. So studying this, whether you're studying you know, world politics, whether you're studying interpersonal violence, whether you're studying you know, advertising on television, or whether you're studying internet, or whether you're studying you know, growing up as a boy uh, in any part of the world, is, is a really important thing to make explicit. And it's part not only of understanding and analyzing and doing research and study, it's part and parcel of a whole process of change or attempted change. So there's a big connection between these studies, researches and many kinds, and the whole project of trying to change towards more gender equal relations and also more equal relations across other divisions like racialization and age and sexuality and class. Well, the question is why not, right? It's, um, well, because men usually uh, F up, right? Like that's a lot of the problems in, in, in our current situation, in our actuality, in our world, is because of unchecked kind of masculinity or, or types of masculinity. So if we study it, you get a better grip of, of, of how to maybe offer new paradigms. And then if you offer new paradigms for masculinity, as an example, you're opening up new paradigms for living in the world in a more ethical way. Well, I, I think, um, I mean, the reason why I'm interested in studying masculinities is because um, I, I, I mean, I grew up among men, I grew up among brothers, but I felt that I did not understand them. I felt that I did not really know them. And, <clears throat> and I, I, I felt left out, so it was quite personal. I felt that they left me out. 
and I was, I, I just wanted to get into their heads. But I think socially the reason why it's important to study men is because they play a significant role in how um, society works and without really unpacking what it means to be a man, we really uh, miss out on understanding why we have the, 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 the social problems that we have and it also um, contributes to challenges around resolving those social problems. So I think understanding and studying men helps us begin to address some of the social problems that we, we have. It is very relevant now, in fact now more than ever, to talk about masculinities because we see a lot of problems about masculinity in this world. Women, children getting affected, even men themselves, injuring themselves. So we need perhaps to go back and find out what do we mean by being a man? Are men the only contributors to the social problems that we have? Or we have got other contributors? We cannot find those answers unless if we study men in the essence. Thank you, sir. Uh, why do we study men and masculinities? Um, and and I'm, I'm going to go with the separation of the two for now. Uh, it's important to study men because we need to recognize men as actual social agents in their own right. Um, and, and we've done that before, but I think we've also done it in very problematic ways. Uh, so I think it's important to think about men and to, to think about ways that we can work with men uh, but men as partners, men, men as, as our, our friends, men as our husbands, as, as our partners. Um, and to not try and think about men as, as entities that exist outside of ourselves who continually evoke problems for us and the rest of society. So I guess what I'm thinking about is studying men as, as human beings, as social agents, uh, who can contribute to the greater good. So it's, it's very important to do that. On the other hand, it's important to study masculinities because I want us to think about masculinities as ideology. Uh, so I'm not thinking about social agents and actual real human beings here. I'm thinking about an ideology of masculinity that tells men and women what men should be like. Uh, and we need to separate that out and study masculinities as these constructs that have been put together and constructs that are not just not in the service of women but not in the service of men as well. So that's important. I think it's important because as humans we are all God's creation. And for us, for me to understand, for me to be able to get along with someone, I have to understand them. So in order to understand someone, you have to learn them. And it is important for theorists, for scientists out there to gather as many knowledge so that when you learn about someone, it's based on something that has been researched and it has been documented. Then you can, you take it from there, that this is what is said as a baseline, and then you do your own research going forward. So it is important to get along with someone that you know actually what is happening in their mind, in their environment, in their daily life, in their community and workplaces. Could you tell us um, why there might be a need to study men and masculinities? Well, I think if we think about men and masculinities, firstly, we can think about them as, uh, if we think about men, the sort of social category of men, or which is often conflated with, with sex, having a penis, then we can see men as a significant portion of, of the sort of global population. So the issues that affect them uh, are issues that affect half the world. Then, of course, you know, men and masculinities are also relational. So the issues that affect men uh, often in, in contradictory and conflicting ways also, uh, also affect women uh, and children and people of other genders. So I think if we think about masculinity studies uh, or the study of men, uh, it sort of transcends, I mean, men are implicated in all areas of social life, in the work that they do, in the roles they play in families, in the roles they play in the state. And so uh, I think, you know, I think we're seeing at the moment a lot of interesting stuff about men in global politics. So I think that studies of men and masculinities, both men in terms of physical beings and also social ideas about masculinity, uh, allows us to understand a lot about the world and a lot about why the world is in the condition that it is in today. We study men and 
masculinities in order to understand society. Um, but I mean, I guess in my part, it is um, about understanding self. Uh, so it's more like a self, I don't want to say self-indulgent, but like self-exploring field that you go in. But I mean, it is important because um, we need, and also I think for the l longest time, men have not been gendered. So it is very important for us to, to study them and um, look at different look at different factors and how do they relate with society at large. Yeah. Uh, for me, with thinking about racial capitalism, with thinking about black masculinity, and of course the gender component, hence of racial capitalism, I think it's important that we always understand the material and ideological interplay um, in, in components for, for social expectations and how they're just juxtaposed against unequal access. Um, so, so thinking about um, in that context how black men are in a perpetual crisis of black mas masculinity from the incorporation of, of you know, the start of colonialism and, and slave legacies to the present. Uh, because there's an unequal distribution of the, the costs and benefits of capitalism. So, and of course, this affects black families, this affects fatherhood, this affects um, even the, the ability to feel like a, a husband and, and a dignified man. So thinking about what studies of men and masculinity contribute to, to the world and, and to scholarship, the race and gender categories by, by dismantling them and understanding them within capitalism instead of it's just a system that works without making these, these distinctions of humanity um, helps us understand the unequal distribution of, of how, how the world is today. Again, as I mentioned, the, the winners and losers, the costs and benefits.